fire crackling in the background. We can all dress up like presidents. <laughs> Hands off that dial. Business is about to get a whole lot nerdier. You're tuned in to Founder Quest. I'm blaming a lot on the internet these days, Josh. Mm -hmm. So one more thing, we'll just throw it on the pile. We'll get a volume discount on that. I love it. Yeah. Take that to town. Internet's pretty much responsible for all the ills in the world, I think. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a few goods, a few goods, but um, it allows me to write out the ills in relative comfort, but. Right. (laughs) You never, you never have to leave your house. (laughs) No, I never have to leave my house. Yeah. So I guess we should explain. So. If the astute listeners haven't noticed, um, Ben is not with us today. And the reason for this is very convoluted. We had originally planned to um, record this episode on a Friday. And we had Ben, we had Josh, we had everybody ready to go. And then this truck pulls up outside my house and starts sawing down this gigantic tree, chipping it. And there was just no way that was going to happen. So we canceled. But then Ben has all sorts of travel plans because he's He's on vacation. He's an international Ben of mystery. (laughs) <laughs> and so, yeah, so it's me and Josh this week. So we're going to be talking about something that Ben usually doesn't get involved too much in, which is content creation, like blog posts and email newsletters and all that stuff. And it's something oh that uh, you happen to be actually working on lately. I am working on it. Yeah, right now. I don't know if our readers remember or listeners remember, but a couple weeks ago, I put out a call for writers for people to contribute to our blog. And we actually had a lot of people respond to that. It was very successful. The only issue is like, now I have to go through all of them and kind of like manage that process and chat with them about what they want to write. And I think it's all going to turn out really well, but this whole like having coordinating things with like 15 different people over email and having all of them at a different stage in the process like that's the type of thing that is designed to like make my brain just fall apart. <laughs> like it's just something I'm yeah. inherently not good at. It sounds like you're you're uh, kind of like a magazine producer or something now, or editor. It is, yeah. I'm yeah. kind of like an editor in chief. <laughs> it's pretty we could, cool. Uh, we could give you a title of editor if you want business cards or something, well, or or well, like ed- a desk, one of those little desk uh, name plates. That would be nice. I, I'll yeah. take it. I'll take whatever form of recognition <laughs> I can get. So we watched, Evie and I watched The Devil Wears Prada a couple days ago. So I'm mm-hmm. already, I'm like ready for my role as a big time magazine editor. Nice. If you haven't seen that, have you seen it, Josh? I have, yeah. It's been a while, but I think, yeah, I, I saw it a while back. Yeah. So it's all about, <laughs> what is it? A thinly disguised fictional, fictionalization of like Anna Wintour's Vogue or something. Mm. Anyway, this, this lady who ran Vogue and was like very mean to her subordinates right. or something and imperious. That's what I'm working towards. And then in the end, though, she doesn't she have like a change of heart in the end or, or something? I mean, I don't want to no, spoiler was, alert, but is it, there really? Was, no, there's no change. Oh, okay. of heart. It was very I thought confusing. there was. It was very That's confusing. That's too bad. Yeah. So at the end, it's like the movie simultaneously like celebrated this woman, this young woman who sort of like rejected it all and went off to do her own thing mm-hmm. while at the same time sort of like glorifying the sort of like people who stayed in the magazine and like devoted their lives to it, even though their lives were falling apart. It's like, I have no idea what the moral of this is. Like, which, like pick one. I have faith in you. And as the editor of the Honey Badger blog that you will, uh, you will see, uh, see the light in the end. I'm not sure how many divorces <laughs> I'm willing to have to make the Honey Badger <laughs> blog a success though. Right. So yeah, I was honestly super pleased with the quality of people who applied and just like some really good writing going on out there. Like, I consider myself a pretty good writer. It's like, I'm like, oh man, these people might be better than me. So I've got to get wow. them on my team. Yeah, they must be pretty good. That's cool. I can't, can't wait to see what they, uh, to read what they uh, come up with. Are you kind of like directing the topics or like, what's your process for kind of figuring out what, what each person is going to work on? Well, like most things I do in life, I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. Basically, my, my plan was to sort of see what people wanted to write about and see if I could make that sort of fit with the theme of our blog. And at least the initial um, contracts we do with people are probably just going to be stuff that they want to write about, which I think is great Mm -hmm. because they don't, you know, they probably already know about it and are excited. As time goes on, like maybe I will jump in there and suggest things or I'm really, really hoping to have a sort of collaborative relationship with these folks. I'm not just like 
assign them something and then they produce a deliverable and then I sign off on it and then they get a check at the end. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm kind of hoping it'll be this personal little, like I just get to be like the den mother of the writer's room and <laughs> just make everybody cookies. And, and just as long as they keep producing that content. We talked about, I think doing like a series, like series of posts kind of around a central theme or, or central topic or something. And I, I imagine you could have some opportunity to kind of like take, take the initial topics and develop them, you know, like suggest areas that you could go deeper on for like future or subsequent posts and, and that sort of thing. Series are sort of my attempt to sort of do double duty because like we, we found that we have good success with this ebook that I wrote a long time ago based on sort of blog articles. It's about um, Ruby errors and stuff. And we, we have a lot of people download that. And so it's like, well, if we have more ebooks, that would be nice. But the thing is, it's like, if you just kind of assemble ebooks from haphazard blog articles, it's, it's really difficult. Like, I basically had to rewrite everything in that book. I couldn't just compile articles and have it be mm -hmm. read as a book because they were all, there was no planning behind it. So my, my thought with series is that each blog post can be maybe like a chapter in an ebook or something. And so then we can sort of, you know, publish this in lots of different ways. And, and hopefully that will provide value for people. For my own writing, like I just, I find it hard to context switch. So if I can spend like two months writing many articles about the same topic, more or less, mm -hmm. like that's going to be way more efficient than switching around all the time for me. I was going to ask about that. Actually, I made a note before this call because that's, that's one of the things that I have too right now, because as you know, I've, my contribution to the whole content thing over the past year or so has mainly been in the form of getting our like email newsletter and our email content going. What's that yeah. called? There's, it's uh, leveling up, right? So yeah, we have an email or like our newsletter series is called leveling up. It's basically a newsletter you subscribe to and we uh, send out, I think it's a couple emails a month right now goes out. I think it's like every, uh, pretty sure it's every Tuesday just covers topics of more general interest. It's some of them are like technical development things and other things are kind of just like of general interest to like web developers. And, um, with a specific idea of advancing your career or leveling up as a developer level up your career as a web developer subscribe yep. now that's it you can uh, actually it's if you do want to subscribe it's a uh, honeybadger.io forward slash leveling dash up i believe and if it's not that right a script buzz, <laughs> if buzz it's URL not, until you can find yeah. one or or it just works. go to our blog and there's a sign up form <laughs> that's probably yeah. easier that's that's probably the, like what i should have said I remember when you came out with the sort of idea behind this newsletter, like there were some sort of high level businessy ideas happening around. Like, what were you trying to, to accomplish? Was this an outgrowth of you attending that Seth Godin seminar, maybe? Yeah, maybe a little bit. I think it was just more like a way to come up with content that like developers would care about and that would actually like be a valuable, like a valuable source of uh, education or learning. I wanted to cover maybe. A little bit of the overlap between like the business end of things and maybe the marketing end of things and uh, like development. So it's got a little bit of a flavor of like founder quest, indie hacker type stuff that we talk about on here. It's probably a little bit more on the technical end. Yeah, but you managed to, to do it in a way that doesn't really require a ton of updating, right? It's kind of it's more evergreen than like yeah. a normal like tutorial blog post. The, the name that the, that the marketing people these days use for the type of newsletter, like the way it's set up is a, is called an evergreen newsletter. So the idea is that instead of like a traditional newsletter where you're like, you have to come up with content every week or, you know, how, however often you're sending and you have to like, you're basically like on a constant schedule to like send the next, the next newsletter with an evergreen newsletter, people like sub subscribe to it at like as they over time but they're basically subscribing to like a, uh, it's more of a sequence. So everyone starts at the beginning, gets all of the, the past emails that have been sent. And then when they reach the end, they start to get any new content that you're adding to the list. So it kind of gives you a way to uh, get off of that like hamster wheel of content production and, um, and kind yeah, of like produce now. really good content. We should figure out a way to do that with this podcast. That's kind of built in. We, maybe we could just like tell people to start at the beginning instead of <laughs> oh yeah there you go <laughs> if you if you just subscribe just go all the way back in time and start at the very first one and that's basically an evergreen podcast and if you get to the last one just start over these episodes have depth 
I'll, I mean, I'll do that with a, with a really good podcast. I'll, I'll listen to some past episodes that, you know, go back and refresh myself. So when I get into a podcast, <laughs> I love though, I listen to the whole catalog. Yeah. There's no stop at me. <laughs> <laughs> We're selling this pretty hard. Yes. But you have to, I mean, you know, when you're hustling. Hustling? I don't know. I wanted to talk about the, uh, the whole, um, I think you mentioned the mental context switching thing. It's or like, it's easier for you to like sit down and write for, you know, like a month versus trying to like write a bunch of stuff in between other things that you're doing. Yeah. I get that too. Right now I, I was, I was working on like newsletter content pretty much exclusively. Like when I was doing more marketing things, now I've been like, I've taken a detour back into development stuff and it's like the, the content and writing side has dropped off a little bit just because it's so like, it takes a lot of brain power to, and focus to like actually do good writing, like, you know, write a good article that people are going to care about. It's almost like it's a full-time job. Yeah, pretty much. And it's, I don't know, I find this, it's a different kind of brain power than like programming. And also you have a lot fewer kind of incremental deliverables, right? Because like you may write something, but then the next day you may just delete it. And Mm -hmm. it's not like you're just sort of incrementally pushing these little units of, of work to the thing. So at first that that really bothered me at first because I don't know. It's just like I, I felt like I wasn't getting anything done, even though I was obviously sort of getting stuff done. Seems like it's more definitely more of a creative process where you've you got a lot of like you're kind of like formulating even if you like write the first draft and delete the whole thing because it's just not what you where you were going, it probably helps you like figure out what the what you actually need to write. Oh, totally. Can I share with yeah. you my writing process, Josh? I would love to hear your writing process. Okay, so it centers around the fact that I find it difficult to read things unless they're really simple, simply written. And so basically I write something and then I come back the next day. I'm like, I can't understand that. Like, what am I trying to say? So I rewrite it. And then I just like do that for about a week. And then eventually it's, you know, about as like simple and compact as it'll be. Yeah. You, you end up with like a couple paragraphs and, yeah. So the, <laughs> yeah, the takeaway is like having ADHD happens. and not be able to like, <laughs> like read dense text very easily. I, well, I, you've edited my writing before. So, so, you know, I tend to like, I tend to ramble long and then, and then come back and, and pare it down. And yeah, I think I've gotten better a at that. Yeah. You're a rambling man. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've got, that's something I've had to learn too, is, is to, uh, you know, come back and, and condense and try to say things as, as uh, briefly as possible. It's definitely, definitely helped my writing. I'm going to be writing more for the blog after I get like all this stuff set up with the other writers. Like I'm going to contribute myself, but also like, I kind of want to make it so that I'm not sort of the, the main person driving the content of the blog. Mm -hmm. Like I would like my efforts to be kind of supplemental to it so that, you know, if, you know, something happens to me or whatever, like all you have to do is keep having the same people write write good content i don't know maybe yeah. that's uh that's that's the dream at least well not the not the something happening to you but making the blog sustainable yeah, yeah. i'm, I'm I totally hope, not, i hope nothing happens to you there's totally not in my google search history um searches about like having yourself disappeared that seriously uh, yeah mysteriously yeah well if you ever yeah just vanish I won't it might be a good marketing stunt for us you could run ads be like where's star where's <laughs> who's that yeah, Ben and I will just do the podcast. It'll be like it will turn it into like a true crime pod- podcast where we like we're like uh, investigating your disappearance. Oh my goodness! And it's <laughs> going to turn out that you were the murderers after all, and you did it so that you can make a true crime podcast out of it. <laughs> you just gave away the ending, though. Oh damn! We'll, Sorry, we'll cut that uh, out. Yeah, we'll cut that. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I'm looking forward to with having more like a variety of content on the blog, at least from an email standpoint is that it gives it makes my job as just writing emails a lot easier because i can just like write emails about the content and kind of just like promote the content that we're that other people are writing versus having to like produce it all myself Um, yeah that makes it so so much easier that'll be nice honestly like the main thing about doing about, about hiring people about having other people create content is that one of the hardest things for me isn't necessarily the writing writing is isn't that difficult for me but what's hard is after I exhaust my like well of topics that I know about like right away and like trying to come up with new topics 
a long time ago, like a couple of years ago, I was, my goal was to like write a new technical blog post every day. I didn't quite meet it, but I, I came close and we saw a lot of good results from that, but I eventually sort of like quit because it was, it was just impossible to keep up because I felt like I had like written about everything I could possibly yeah. write about without setting out and exploring new frontiers of knowledge that, yeah. that and once covered I started, a lot. Yeah. And once yeah. I started doing that, like once I started trying to cover things I didn't know, then it became super hard because now, well, I think this is going to be an interesting topic. And so I spend a day or two like researching it and doing little blurbs about it. And then I realize, oh shit, this is actually not the way people do things anymore because yeah. I didn't understand that because I didn't really understand the topic. So that time is wasted. And then I don't know. I just, I felt like that was that that's really what kind of made it impossible is just like having to, to have this breadth of topics. I think that, so that comes down to some somewhat of a contextual problem, I think, because a lot of times when I'm trying to like, when I actually write something that I really end up liking, that's like, is actually like really relevant and, and like add something to the conversation. It's like, it's come as a result of, you know, maybe I've been reading like a bunch of different books kind of around that sa- in that same, you know, around that same idea for a couple months or something versus like going and trying to like understand a topic in a short period of time and then come up with like something to say a lot of times, yeah. like I need to be honestly, like for when I'm, when I'm actually writing a lot, like I'm, I'm doing a lot of reading and research and just general exploration behind the scenes like that. For me, that's like, that's like where the writing pretty much comes from. Oh, totally. Like you need time yeah. for that stuff to percolate and you get, yeah. I, yeah. Also, I, I, I noticed that when I, I would uh, try and cover topics I didn't really know that much about. It's like, you know, really all I'm doing is paraphrasing other tutorials at this point. Cause it's like, I don't really have enough knowledge about this to contribute much to it, except in maybe sort of the way I organize the, the writing or the knowledge mm-hmm. or whatever. But really it's like, I've read three or four tutorials or articles about this. And now I'm just kind of like <laughs> condensing that into like a yeah. article, which just kind of didn't really seem like the most useful thing for the world to have. When we were learning Elixir earlier, I guess earlier this year is still, you did a, a blog post or two about some like just beginner Elixir topics that just like re- came out of your, uh, as a, as a beginner, like learning the language, um, and learning how it does things differently and that sort of thing. And those, I thought those turned out really well, but I think the difference there is that you were actually like diving into a topic, like, um, you had been like working with it for a couple of months and you were actually like, you were just in the process of learning it and happened to have happen to see things that, that you didn't understand as a beginner. And I think in that case, like there's a good chance that a lot of other people that are just beginning would benefit from that. If it's, if it's like actually trying to understand how like a concept works or something versus like a tutorial. Yeah. I guess, I guess he being able to, to put out a bunch of content if the the sort of premise was that, okay, I don't know Elixir. I'm going to learn Elixir and just write about everything, which is how a lot of developer blogs work. I think that works really well if you happen to be learning a new language or something new for a long period of time. I don't know if it's sustainable as like an approach to just go and produce content, like just go, no. go learn like an entirely new, uh, you know, career as a developer and then uh, yeah, use that as your, you know, jumping off point to, to write about. But well, I mean, if we wanted a ton of content about Elixir, then it might be a good idea. But yeah. I I mean, frankly, like a lot of our stuff is, is, you know, we still write a lot of stuff about Ruby people. And I mean, that's still primarily our main audience, even if our blog posts cover things other than Ruby. I don't know. And at this point, there's not much in Ruby that is super surprising and new to me. Although I, there's still a couple things, you know, Ruby is the gift that keeps mm-hmm. on giving. As they continue to, to develop it, there will there will be hopefully some big new things to talk about. Oh, yeah. But then everybody's going to be talking and, about that. But yeah, that's true. So you're going to be writing more emails soon you said i would like to Uh, yeah so i've been trying to figure that out like how do i pace that writing assuming that i'm going to be like jumping between different things that i do you know because i i still do development i still do i still want to write i want to uh you know do a little marketing that sort of thing and all of those things are like they are very like mentally exhausting for me so you know i have a certain amount of like mental resources that i have each day to invest in something 
And if I'm investing it all in like developing or development or whatever, you know, it's probably going to be a, at least a couple, a week or two of like unwinding from that before I can get into a mode of like actually, you know, thinking and, and writing. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I might do like similar to what you're doing where I just kind of, you know, take weeks or, or months where I focus on a specific area so that I can actually go deep on those things and, and get fully into that frame of mind. Yeah, this is one of the, the less fun aspects of having a really small company because you end up wearing so many hats that it's, it's sort of like a game of whack-a-mole. It's like you can focus on your code, but then, well, you're not doing the blog. And it's going to take you a while to get used to doing the blog again. And then, mm -hmm. but no more, no more. We're professionals <laughs> now. We're a professional business organization that hires people to do business activities. <laughs> Well, uh, do you have anything more to say or should we wrap this one up? It can be a little short episode since it's just us. Oh, yeah, I think we keep it short, you know, short chat. And then Ben will be back next week. And that sounds good. Maybe we could have special branding for this and be like uh, Founder Quest Fireside Chats. I like that. <laughs> nice. Next time we'll, uh, we'll have to have our apple cider ready and uh, we'll do that. All right. Well, I will go start mulling that, I guess. <laughs> I, I guess I better go plant an apple tree now. You have a lot of things to mull over. <laughs> I do. 